Welcome, friends. James Corbett here, CorbettReport.com, coming to you on the 9th of April, 2018, at 11 a.m. Japanese time, with some breaking news or new news. Uh, uh, specifically, as the New York Times puts it, as Trump seeks way out of Syria, new attack pulls him back in, reporting on how days after President Trump said he wanted to pull the United States out of Syria, Syrian forces hit a suburb of Damascus with bombs that rescue workers said unleashed toxic gas. Within hours, images of dead families sprawled in their homes threatened to change Mr. Trump's calculus on Syria, possibly drawing him deeper into an intractable Middle Eastern war that he hoped to leave hoped to leave. And uh, the t tweet tirade from 13 hours ago at this point, many dead, including women and children, in mindless chemical attack in Syria. Area of atrocity is in lockdown and encircled by Syrian army, making it completely inaccessible to outside world. President Putin, Russia, and Iran are responsible for backing animal Assad. Animal Assad. Big price to pay. Open area immediately for medical help and verification. Another humanitarian disaster for no reason whatsoever. Sick. If President Obama had crossed his stated red line in the sand, the Syrian disaster would have ended long ago. Animal Assad would have been history. So I think we know what the new epithet that's going to be slung around on Twitter and other places and repeated endlessly by Trump repeaters uh, in the next few days is going to be Animal Assad, Animal Assad. So specifically what this is referring to is a report, new flare-up of violence in the last rebel-held city in eastern Ghouta has served as an opportunity for the U.S. State Department to claim chemical weapons were being used. The allegations were quickly endorsed by Da, 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 the White Helmets, a Syrian medical NGO active in a number of rebel territories. The White Helmets are often making allegations of war crimes in Syria. 40 were killed Friday and scores more Saturday in airstrikes against Duma. There is no conclusive evidence that this was anything other than a conventional attack, and indeed, unconventional airstrikes often kill that many people. In fact, the BBC originally claimed 150 killed, later re reducing the finger figure to 70, saying a tweet later deleted by the White Helmets put the number of dead at 150. So... There's very little to go on at this point uh, with regards to hard evidence to these claims, but it is interesting to note the context of this, as even the New York Times notes, just days after Trump, literally days after Trump was seeking a way out of Syria, we have this to draw him back in. Uh, just a reminder for people who forget from my, all of, what, five, six days ago, Trump seeks Syria pullout as advisors warn of hard work ahead. Uh, tr Trump said on Tuesday he wanted to get out of Syria, but offered no timetable and was quickly slapped down by military officials. Um, Trump reportedly wanted media pullout from Syria, but military officials are fighting back. Military officials expressed concern over a rapid pullout. The Joint Chiefs of Staff, Staff reportedly spoke up and told Trump that his approach was not productive. So, just days after that whole incident happened, we have this, whatever this is, occurring right now. Hmm, I wonder if there's any connection there. Well, can we look at some things that have happened in the past along these lines? And yes, we can go back almost exactly one year ago. Remember March 30th of 2017, where uh, Nikki Haley and uh, Rex Tillerson were going around saying that priority on Syria no longer focused on getting Assad out. Well, maybe Assad doesn't have to go. Maybe we can leave it up to the Syrian people. Both Tillerson and Haley were saying that. And then just days later, uh, no role for Assad in governing Syria, literally just five days, six days after that was said. Why? Because, of course, in the meantime, we had the Khan Shakun chemical weapons attack, where, again, Assad, on the brink of this major breakthrough, no, we don't have to get Assad out, he decided at that point to launch a chemical weapons attack on innocent civilians, as I'm sure any stable military commander would do. And once again, we see Trump thinking about getting out of Syria, uh, but Assad won't let him. He will absolutely late stage chemical attacks on his own population to draw, to make sure that the United States and others get involved militarily and kick him out. Um, I don't see the logic here, but uh, logic doesn't really apply in situations like this, does it? So for those who don't remember the Khan Shakun incident and the Syria strikes, uh, I will of course put in the link to my Syria strikes aftermath uh, video, what we know so far with the open source investigation that we did at that time about the different details of that attack and how it was being deconstructed at the time by Ray McGovern and others. And uh, for further context, we'll go all the way back to the 2013 Damascus uh, nerve agent attack um, and the 2014 MIT report that came out that completely obliterated the U.S. government position at that time, that it was unquestionably this was Assad. Well, actually, they say, no, there were egregious errors in the intelligence, um, which... Uh, basically meant that the entire uh, story that was told was completely wrong. And in fact, um, the 
tr- the, the munitions could not possibly have been fired at East Ghouta from the heart or from the eastern edge of the Syrian government-controlled area shown in the intelligence map, i.e. they completely and utterly made up this intelligence map that uh, showed where the munitions were being fired from. It was clearly from Assad when MIT proved it clearly could not have been. So these, uh, these kinds of claims go back and back and back, even 2012, even before that 2013 claim, we had uh, chemical weapons uh, allegations and the infamous red line. I did a GRTV report at that time dissecting those lies. So I'll put that report in as well for further context to what is happening right now. Um, but I think what we have to do right now is exactly what we did last year, which is collect the information that's coming out. We have a brief window of opportunity, perhaps, to actually find some verifiable, documentable evidence about what did and did not happen in, uh, in this eastern Gouda area in the suburbs of Damascus. Um, we will have some brief window of opportunity where some, some reporting might get out. So I want to collect that in an open source investigation. Please do log into the site. Please do leave any and all information related to this topic that you can find. Uh, I'll throw in, of course, all these links that I've been talking about, as well as uh, a link to the latest uh, 20 Sunday Wire, um, where uh, Patrick Henningsen talks to uh, the British ambassador to Syria, the former British ambassador to Syria, Peter Ford, where they talk about some of these uh, different memes, including, of course, the recent, very recent, completely collapsed chemical weapon story about Skripal. It was uh, Putin in London with the Novichok or something like that. Oh, wait, no, it wasn't. So Skripal Gate has completely collapsed in recent days. Porton Down has come, had to, uh, on Sky, Sky TV interview of all places, admitted, well, we can't say it's Russian. In fact, we don't know where it came from. And the entire narrative has completely collapsed. Uh, the Skripals are about to be released from hospital. No, they're not dead. They're not even close. So... Um, that complete narrative is collapsing. Um, that's just another part of this whole chemical weapons uh, lies that we're being fed over and over and over and over and over. And uh, the stakes are extremely high. There's already reports completely unconfirmed, so we'll have to obviously vet this, and I hope people will do this in the open source investigation, but reports of airstrike on Syria, reports of fighter jets and missiles over Lebanon, there are photos and things coming out. The Pentagon, for its part, is saying there is no truth to reports of a U.S. attack at this time, but... We'll see what happens in the coming hours. And just in case there's any question about where this push, this new sudden revived push, you have to go in and get animal Assad, uh, is coming from, uh, of course, it's coming from our old friends like McCain. POTUS's pledge to withdraw from Syria has only emboldened Assad. You see, even talking about the idea of withdrawing from Syria has made Assad go crazy and start launching chemical weapons attacks on his own civilians, of course, backed by Russia and Iran, who are just immediately complicit in all of this, of course. And so, uh, in order to commit war, war crimes in Duma, uh, the POTUS responded after last year's chemical attack, he should do so again and make Assad pay a price for his brutality. So, the usual warmongers already calling for more war. No surprise whatsoever. So we need to dissect this narrative as it is happening in real time. Let's collect as much information as we can in the comments section here uh, and start this open source investigation so that we can try to get a handle on what is happening and the developments as they come. I have a feeling they're going to be uh, a very thick and fast and furious uh, series of events in the next few days. So let's keep our handle on it best we can. James Corbett, CorbettReport.com.